Oh man, it's time for some more angle arc theorems in 10.6. Yes. Let's check this problem out together. I will be your partner. <laughs> All right, so find the measures of the numbered angles. And I've give, been given a little bit of information here. Arc AB is 46 and arc CD is 53. So let's see here. If I'm looking to find angle 1, angle 1 is going to be half of 53, which is 26. Is angle 1 intercepts this arc right here, CD. Angle 2 also intersects arc CD. Angle 2 is half of 53, which is also 25, or sorry, 26.5. Okay. And now we have 46 for AB, and angle 4 and also angle 3 intersect this same arc here, which is 46, so they're both half of that, which is 23. Okay, well, what can we gather from this? Well, in fact, what we can gather from this is that if an angle, or two angles, excuse me, intercept the same arc, two on angles intercept the same arc, then those two angles are congruent. It's very important that those are on angles. So let's write this theorem down. If two inscribed or tangent chord on angles, remember those are the ones we're going to refer to them as on angles in class, because this is all pretty, it's a mouthful to, to say this every time. So on angles, an angle that has its vertex on the circle. They intersect the same arcs, then they are congruent. Very, very important. Now remember, it's not just any angle, it's only the on angle. So the vertex has to be on the circle somewhere around here. Here's another awesome one. An angle inscribed in a semicircle is a, hmm, let's think here. If it's a semicircle, what's my intercepted arc here? Well, that's 180 degrees, right? And if this right here is an on angle because the vertex is on the circle, then it's half of that, which is 90, so it's a right angle. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Super cool. And woo woo. Write it down. Here's something that we talked about a little bit before we alluded to it, if you will. The sum of the measures of a tangent tangent angle and its minor arc is what? Hmm. Well, let's think about this for a sec. If this arc right here is 100, then the arc out here is 260, right? And if I want to find my tangent tangent angle, my out angle, my out angle, I'm going to take the difference of those two, 260 minus 100, which is 160, and I'm going to divide that by 2, which gives me 80. So I know that angle P is 80 degrees. Well, what do those two add up to? 80, 100, 180. Hmm. Hmm. Coincidence? I think not. So this is 180 degrees. Super cool. Now anytime you see a tangent tangent, you don't have to do all this mumbo jumbo over here. If I see 100 degrees here, I know this is 80. If I see 120 here, I know this is 60. If I see 170 here, I know this is 10. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You guys know what time it is? It's proof time. Woo woo. All right, we're giving circle O. I know you guys all love them when we have circle O. Cause this looks like circle circle. We want to prove that EV times EN, EV times EN, is equal to EL times SE. Hmm. Hmm. I remember seeing this back in similar triangle time. Oh, man. We're bringing back some similar triangles. So, what we need to do is we need to prove similar triangles. We can use that CSSTP, the corresponding sides of similar triangles are proportional. And then we can use the means extremes product theorem for our proof. Those last three steps, those are easy. We just have to prove the triangles similar first. Well, I only have that it's a circle. What can I do? Ah! Oh wait, we just learned a super awesome new theorem. What about this arc here? This is LN. It's intercepted by both angle V and angle S. Well, those two angles intercept the same arc. We know that they are congruent. Let's write that down. Boom, boom. Now what about angle L and N? They both intersect VS, arc VS. So these two angles are congruent because they intercept the same arc. Yeah, yeah. I've got two angles congruent. 
two sets of angles, excuse me. So I've got enough for angle-angle similarity. Let's get this proof happening. So I've used my shared congruent arcs theorem. That's how we write it out shorthand, shared slash congruent arcs theorem, to prove that those two sets of angles are congruent. Well, some of you might be thinking, well, what about the angle right here, V-E-L and S-E-N? Couldn't I use that one too? Because vertical angle is congruent? Absolutely you could. I just did this because it's one less step. I can write it all in here. Plus, I only have to use one letter for each of my angles. Here I could, I would have to say V-E-L and S-E-N because angle E and angle E. I don't know which angle you're talking about over here. Some of you do make that mistake, so be careful. All right. Step three, proving the triangle similar. All right, we've got our triangle similar now. Time to move on to CSSTP. That's right, CSSTP, corresponding sides of similar tri triangles are proportional. Now to set this one up, remember, what I like to do is I take the first one right up here, EV, and make sure it gets multiplied by EN. So I just toss it diagonal from it, because if I'm going to cross multiply, that means extremes product theorem. I have to be diagonal for these two to get multiplied together. And then the other set, EL and SE, go diagonal from each other as well. And whether you set these two diagonal here or here, it doesn't really matter as long as they get multiplied together. I'm not too concerned otherwise. All right, step five. Time for that proof statement. So we have EV times EN equals... EL times SE. We've got the means extremes product theorem. Oh, yeah. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. Woo! Just a couple more examples here. We have PQ and PR are tangents. And we know that QR, arc QR, is 163 degrees. So this is 163. Remember, that's referring to the minor arc. Otherwise, I would need three points if I was talking about this arc here. Excellent. So that's 163 degrees there. I want to find the measure of angle P, and I also want to figure out the measure of angle PQR. Well, hmm, if I know this one right here, if this arc is 163, I know that angle P is going to be 17 degrees. How do I know that? How do I know this? This is sorcery. How did I figure that out so quick to know that angle P is going to be 17 degrees? Well, 180 minus... 163 equals 17. And there you go. That's the measure of angle P. From that theorem we learned earlier, remember that one? Oh, excellent stuff. All right, 17 degrees. Now, notice I didn't say supplementary because we're not talking about two angles that add to 180. We're talking about an angle and an arc. So they're not really the same thing, so we can't really use that term supplementary in this case. Moving on, PQR. Hmm, well, I have no idea. Oh, wait, yes, I do have an idea. What if I say these two are congruent because it's tangent tangent? Remember that? Oh, that's good stuff from a couple days ago. Well then, if this is 17 up top, I know that these two angles here are congruent because of if sides then angles. And I can just take the 180 degrees that's in a triangle, subtract the 17, right? And that's 163, of course. We already know that from before. Divide that by 2, and what do I get? 81.5 bibbity boppity boo and there's my answer for the measure of angle PQR ha huh. dynamite just just absolutely exciting so here we have two lines PW and QZ that are tangent to the small circle and secant to the larger circle all right we can see that in the, the diagram pretty clearly well we know that WZ, let's just start writing this stuff down, is 126. This right here is 40. XY is 40 degrees. Well, I can totally find out this angle from that. And, and remember, we're trying to find our arc PQ here. So I'm going to basically just work, work across. So we have 126 and 40. If I take the difference of those, 126 minus 40, and I divide that by 2 because this is an out angle. We're talking about an out angle here, which would be the difference of the two arcs, divided by 2. That would give me 43 for this angle here, and also this angle here. So both of them are 43 degrees. Well, if that's 43, remember, I have this arc here. This is tangent, tangent. Well, if this is 43, this one has to be 180 minus 43 because they add up to 180. So I'm going to have 180 
minus 43 equals 137, 137 degrees. Oh, yeah. Not too bad, right? Just working your way across the circles. I love doing that. We've got a big week coming up right before spring break. We're going to have a quiz Tuesday. We're going to review Wednesday, and we're going to do the proof portion Thursday with some questions beforehand, as usual. And then you guys are going to have your multiple choice on Friday. Holy cow, that sounds like an awesome, super cool, jam-packed week.